So we just did a nine week update in a short. We went through and clipped more uh, runners and leaves that weren't getting the best light and watered them again and brought them up to 2.3 to 2.5 EC. And they're about medium size. They could get a little bigger still before I let them flower, but I'm just gonna let them flower anyway. Uh, the one downstairs, which I can show, is fully grown but they're not in flowering temperatures because it's hot down there i'm gonna go through again today and just clip some more runners and any leaves that i don't want we have some little berries that are starting to ripen off there and one full one that's looking pretty good but again these are and when i show the one downstairs you'll get a good comparison but these are still like medium-sized plants these are very young they're only nine weeks old and since there's no um rush for them to stop flowering like they'll flower forever in this environment I feel no need to pick them off, but you could pick them off and let the plant get bigger. But I'm giving them no period of dormancy, so they usually live five to six years outside. They'll come back every year and do a crop per year or two if you have an Everett bearing. But indoors year round, I can keep them going and it will just shorten their lifespan to a couple years. If you wanted to give them dormancy, they go dormant below 41 degrees and can tolerate down to 15 to 20 degrees. When you grow them outside and the winter hits, it's good to winterize them, which means to cover them with a little bit of mulch or soil so that the outside temperatures don't kill the strawberry. Don't let temperatures drop below 20 before doing that. Once they start to consistently drop below 40, that's when you're gonna wanna start to after about three days of it being at 40. That's when you're gonna wanna begin to cover the plant up or clip any leaves that are left. That's all gonna depend on your region outdoors. For indoors, dormancy, if you wanna simulate it or put them in a shed, you can. With hydroponics, you just don't want that water to freeze and go below 32, which is tricky because they go dormant below 41, but freeze the water at 32. You can see how that might be complicated. There's other ways you could try and stimulate dormancy, like cutting them back to bare root changing the light schedule i haven't experimented a whole lot with this but the best way is to simulate the winter with a cold environment there's a misconception that water can't freeze if it's moving water will still freeze because it's complicated i don't do it i actually don't give dormancy to any of my plants even my three-year-old trees some plants like my lemon tree do not require dormancy and i believe the peach tree just decided to go dormant on its own and is coming back after about six months there's not many people that grow trees indoor hydroponically year round so i don't really have a whole lot of research sources to look at other than trying to mimic what happens in nature and just doing research on the plants independently. I know some of these trees aren't even going to flower unless I put them in short cold day or long day environments depending on what they are. I haven't experimented too much with dormancy indoors hydroponically because I live in the desert and I have trouble getting my plants colder. With something like the peach tree I probably would just shorten the time schedule rather than change the temperature because it's going to be too complicated to change the temperature of the whole house but it would probably be easier just to try and stimulate a dormant period by changing the light schedule. The avocado doesn't need dormancy either. Where I live is 10% humidity year round and this can make the temperature feel up to 10 degrees colder as humidity can affect how temperature feels. This is only my second time watering these. I am just because I don't want the Rockwell cube at the top to dry up. You could wait longer if you want to. They're at 2.3 which I wanted to keep them at so I ended up watering with 50-50 to keep them at 2.3. Also I put out a separate video about how to grow strawberries indoors hydroponically year round. I'm trying to do my best to teach you guys everything I possibly can about how to grow strawberries indoors outdoors year round starting them from seed or clone so i'm sorry if i repeat myself a lot or if you've heard me say some of these things before if you want a more detailed video on watering my five week update that i put out previously i go into far more detail on watering since this time i decided to film it for a short i really appreciate your patience and your time and understanding please leave any questions you have below all right so i currently just turned the air conditioner off but we're only getting down to about 78 degrees now I already took two of the units off the top of the LED lights to help cool. And I'm going to take these two off and show you guys me doing it so that you can see how it's done. So they unscrew really easy. You don't need a tool or anything. So the strawberries aren't going to flower if they're above about 76, this variety. Everbearing can go a little hotter up to like 80, but 78 is too warm for them to flower. And it will drop lower at night, and they'll, flower, they'll set flowers when the temperature drops lower at night. But if I can have it consistently always be below the temperature I want, that's really ideal. And also, it gets up to 110 to 120 degrees outside because I live in the desert. And it's only about 80 degrees out today, 90 degrees out, and 
it's only getting down to about 78 in this tent. So the air conditioner has some trouble getting it down to this temperature. Like I was saying before, if I've said it in this video, you like to do 20 BTUs per square foot when you're trying to cool a space. But since we're actively heating the space up with grow lights, I like to do five to 10 times that, which is 100 to 200 BTUs per square foot. That's an 8,000 BTU seasonally adjusted 5,300 BTU air conditioner. So I like to go with the 5,300 seasonally adjusted, not the 8,000, because I'm obviously not gonna have trouble cooling it in the winter, but I will have trouble cooling it in the summer. So I go with the 5,300, whoopsies, unplugged it. They are a little loose on these. Okay. They're hot, I don't wanna burn myself. Turn my dimmer off and then unplug it. Just for a second. This is the main one. Sorry, strawberry. I need to drop that on you. All right. So you could dangle them in the air, but with this tent, this is a five by ten tent, and it has two air holes on either side. So you could have two foot to walk, two feet of plants, two feet to walk, two foot of plants, and two feet to walk. With two, two and a half foot vegetative grow lights where they're two foot flower coverage grow lights. So they cover the two feet there for flowering. Um, but I like this tent because it has the ability to have all that combined. The two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet, and then four lights a small air conditioner and then heating or putting the heating elements or the elements that get the hottest. I call them heating elements because of how hot they get outside of the tent. They're so hot that they can burn you just touching them. That is really hot just to hold. And I've had the other ones up there for a couple days and I don't notice the heat really doing any damage or causing any problems, you know, sitting on top of the tent like that. So that's how we got that one up there and that's how we have the rest of them hanging up there. And then I'll just tighten these loops so that it doesn't fall down in case this ever gets pulled. Just be careful when you put it up there, you don't accidentally hit this string and pull it down, you know? But it's pretty heavy, it's got some weight to it so it holds up there pretty easy, but just be careful you don't have that come back down on you. Same thing with this one. These are incredibly hot. This string really likes me right now. So this is one I thought we were going to have a little trouble with as well, just because we have to get the dimmer cable all the way over to the other set of lights, because I'd like them all to be on a dimmer, the main dimmer, but they all have to all then connect to the main dimmer, which might be a little tough setting it up like this, but if it works well, then this is a really nice setup for these lights and these plants and strawberries in general. That's pretty ideal. Oops, I just hit the mic, sorry. This is gonna go into our channel one. Right? And then we're gonna have this long one that we wanted to bring from the other side of the tent. The strings all over the ceiling is because I've grown a lot of different plants in this tent. I just haven't taken the strings down that I've used to hang them up. And if I grow different plants in this tent one day, which I don't really plan on it, I really want to keep this as a strawberry tent, I'll just use them. Or I just come in here and take them sometimes so I don't have to buy a new string or get more in the channel too. Then if I turn my dimmer on, all the lights are on a dimmer. And all the heating units are now off the back of the lights and up in those little tunnels up there. So I'm just gonna secure these wires, but before I secure the wires, I wanna make sure these are in a good spot so it's not gonna fall. So I really don't want that to fall. You gotta be really careful. And then we're gonna close this up so that there's no chance of that falling trying to find the second one. They have two that you can tighten up so you can be extra sure it doesn't fall. 
So there's two of them there, you see? Because the ports have an inlet and an outlet, so you can bring them together and use them as one, if that makes sense. So yeah, there's no risk of those coming through now. If you do, I accidentally hit these. And then these wires, I just usually throw up on the hooks if they can reach it. This one doesn't look like it really wants to conveniently reach it. So I'd probably throw it up there then. So I'll disconnect this. So I don't really like the wires in a way that could hit me. Let's just try putting it through the hook, I guess. I don't know. Give that long enough and let that swiggle around enough and that's gonna happen. Let's see. There we go. I pulled oh, it a, go. Yeah. a little closer. That's why we gotta be careful of that coming down, you know? You pull that a little too much and that could fall down. So just gotta be really careful of that. But that helps really reduce a lot of heat on these units. Hopefully, it's already at 79 in here. Hopefully we can get this lower than that 78 you saw. And I don't wanna keep them exposed to high temperatures too long because then they're going to go out of flower. So let's see. And then this dimmer cable, I just put up there as well. All right, so that's pretty much out of anywhere I could walk into. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, perfect. So that's a very important thing to do when you're trying to cool a tent down. A lot of the tents I do, even if they're not strawberry tent, are short cold day tents. Because a lot of plants flower under shorter colder days and I live in the desert and these tents get real hot being trapped in here with these lights. So air conditioners are very important to keeping the space cold enough. The carbon filters can help bring in some air out. I have a really large carbon filter for this tent that's not necessary. You could get away with a six inch inline fan which I want to put in this instead and um, that'll help reduce some of the heat but I'm growing in a bedroom so we'll just blow it back into the bedroom and not help too much so even having these heating units outside of this tent it's in the same bedroom so the bedroom will get hot in general but it will help dissipate a little heat from the tent in this area even a little a couple degrees will help we're already at 82. All right so it's been a couple weeks since I filmed that and it's starting to get to 95 out or even up to 100 and the air conditioner is having some trouble like I thought it might we're only getting to about 85 in the tent now so luckily we have central air in the house and I can turn the house central air on and the house air conditioner will keep this colder but moving up past 95 degrees it's hard to keep these below 80. I know at night they'll drop low enough for them to set flowers but I really want to keep them below that constant temperature as much as possible. So I might have needed a larger air conditioner for this room but I just only really need it for a couple months out of the year. And I just don't really want to get a bigger one and I'm not going to. And you know, the rest of the year I don't have an issue with the tents getting like really hot. So the house air conditioner is helping me out, but that's just something you probably are going to want to think about if you live in like a hot climate like I do and it's like a hundred degrees out like every day all the time. And that's why I like having the lights on only for eight hours too, because it uses less electricity. Um, this pulls usually only about 300 watts. I know an 8,000 BTU can pull up to 700 watts, but when I plugged it into my solar generator, it only pulls about 300 watts in its deep state. That's when it's like more than just a fan. And maybe it could go up to higher, but I haven't noticed it go higher. And yeah, in a separate video, I talked about the electricity that goes into this tent. But it's basically like 50 bucks a month because the LEDs are about 20 bucks a month, eight hours a day. Uh, five dollars each a month and then it's about a dollar a day at 300 watts for the air conditioner so I have the air conditioner for the house on right now to bring this temperature lower to keep it below because right now it's actually at 86 since I opened the tent up but yeah just it's trouble keeping the tents cold and I just want to give you as much details as I possibly can about how I keep mine cold all right, so it's 66 degrees in here, I'm freezing. So we're just gonna pick these first two berries and eat them outside. These are really small, but that's because these were the first ones off of a pretty small, medium-sized plant. So 
They'll still taste good because the ones in the store will never really be as good because strawberries, when you pick them, the sugars in them turn to starch right away or over time. So the longer you wait, the less sweet they'll be over time. Yeah, um, this is not what all the berries will be like. They'll all be like this. They just came off like this because these are really young, like baby plants. These are only nine weeks old. So yeah, this isn't what I expect to get off them. Obviously, something more like that. But the first few ones off of a small plant, it, they're still good. Okay, so here we are with our first little baby berries from the tent. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh really yeah, that's really, yep. I was just about to say that. Very flavorful. Yeah, they have like a punch to it. Mm-hmm. Very good. I can't wait for the big ones, though. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me this long. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, I have a list of all the hydroponic gear I use down below. I feel it for it on Amazon, so any purchases directly help out the channel. I also affiliate for Mars Hydro and have discount codes for grow lights, grow tents, and grow tank kits. I have my hydroponic plants playlist and what YouTube thinks is best for you if you want some more of me and my plant content. I really appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.